Today's Shop Talk, we're going to look at the bandsaw and how to produce the right amount of tension on the blade. And I find as I think about my bandsaws and maintaining or keeping that tension on the blade, there's really a life lesson of how do we manage the tension or the stress in my life, in our lives. That's the topic of today's Shop Talk. Today I've, I've got three different bandsaws here. Uh, just a little inexpensive tabletop. Uh, here's an old craftsman that's well over 35 years of age, and then a, a larger grizzly. The thing that is common to each of these bandsaws is in order for it to work properly, the blade has to have a certain amount of tension. Is how do you determine the right tension? Well, as you will note, it's probably the easiest to see on this one, one way is simply to dial in, using this spring, this little lever, to dial in where it says, in this case, a one-eighth one eighth of an inch blade, you can dial it in to an eighth inch. The problem is, they're inaccurate. Same way with this one. This one doesn't have the blade dimension, but it has a scale here. You can adjust this knob and increase the tension on the blade. There are a couple of other ways that you can do it. One is called a pluck method. You, you have the right amount of tension is, is to create a certain pitch, if you wish, on the blade. The problem is, what pitch? C, and that's the problem. There's another method, it's called the flutter method. You undo the tension on the guides up here and down below, so the blade is loose within the guides. And you turn it on and you loosen the tension and the blade will begin to flutter back and forth. You tighten the tension up so that the, the blade then becomes steady. Personally, I don't like those two methods. Another method is to buy about a $300 tool that you can use to set the tension. Well, while I was at school, at a professional woodworker's school in Maine, a gentleman by the name of Mark created a little gadget, $40, that he calls the EZ Tension. Come with me a moment and let me show you what he created. So here's the device. As you notice, the two magnets are now touching the blade. And this little set screw gives the amount of tension. So as I increase the tension on this blade, I want you to see what happens right here. Did you see it jump? Let me do it again so you can see it. I take the tension off of the blade and I set this on the blade. And as you see, both magnets are touching. And then as I increase the tension on the blade, one releases. And when that happens, I know that I have properly set the tension based on the mechanics of the magnets and this protruding um, screw. So here's a lesson I'd like to share with you and Jim Shop Talk. Just as, as we've already demonstrated that it's important to maintain the right tension on a bandsaw blade, how do you manage the tension or the stress in your life? Stress is neither good nor bad, it's how we manage it. Too little stress, one can become complacent. Having some stress can be a motivation to overcome an issue, create a new gadget, uh, become innovative and creative. But too much stress or tension in your life can actually be detrimental, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually damaging. So the challenge is, is how do you manage or maintain the right amount of stress in your life? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a gadget that we could put it to us and it would give us a measure of stress? There's a lot of scales out there that you can find on the internet. Uh, the American Psychological Association talks about surveys and what they found in most adults is that they actually rate themselves at a higher level of stress than what they perceive as being healthy. Everyone has stress. Think about an infant who stresses over the absence of a mother not being in the same room. Or an infant, I mean a child who goes to the school for the first time 
the stress of, of a new situation. Teenagers have stress of wanting to be accepted by peers and others, not knowing what occupation to pick, wearing the right clothes. Adults equally are stressed over getting through with school, finding the right job, finding a mate, getting married, having children, dealing with the finances, dealing with bosses and workmates. So we all have stress, and the challenge then is how do you manage it? How do you keep the right tension of stress? There's a lot of self-help books out on the market of how to deal with stress. There's a lot of behavioral uh, modification kinds of approaches, eating right, getting the right amount of sleep, exercising, deep breathing, thinking things like calm or things that will calm your mind. Well, let me suggest to you, in, in addition to all of those, and those are all good, let me suggest maybe just four thoughts to add to that. The first is you can't always control the situation, but you can control your response. Victor Franklin made, has a quote that says, between the stimulus and the response, there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. He said, in our response lies our growth and our freedom. It's that space of where our attitude makes a difference. So you can't always control the situation, but you can control how you respond. Secondly, focus on what you can change versus worrying about what you cannot change. There's a lot of things that affect us that we have absolutely no control over. The coronavirus is one. It has affected our society. There, we cannot affect that change, but we can affect how we respond to that change in our life. Third, take time to measure your tension or your stress. Just as I have to be aware of the tension on this blade, I need to be aware of the stress or the tension in my life. It's important to find those moments where I can release that tension. At the end of the workday, there's a lever back here, and I can release the stress on this tension, or the tension on this blade, so that it has a chance to sort of relax, if you wish. It's important to do that in our own lives. I find that it's a daily, a weekly, or monthly moment to, to reduce that tension. I call it a minute vacation. In a stressful moment, taking a minute where I'll just close my eyes, I relax, and I purposely seek to calm myself. Johnny Diaz has a song, he entitled it, Just Breathe. Breathe, just breathe. Come and rest at my feet and be just, be chaos calls, but all you really need is to take it in. Fill your lungs, the peace of God that overcomes. Just breathe, just breathe. Let your weary spirit rest. Lay down what's good and find what's best. Just breathe. Just breathe. I love that song because he talks about the peace of God that overcomes. A breathe in that in. Last, I would tell you is ensure that God is in your boat. There's a story in Mark chapter 4 and Luke chapter 8. The disciples had piled into a boat. Jesus said, let's go to the other side of the, the sea. And, and, and they're course of their movement from one bank to the other side this huge storm blows up and the disciples these are these are fishermen who grew up on the sea and they were afraid Jesus was in the back of the boat asleep and the disciples woke him up and said teacher teacher don't you care that we drowned and Jesus awoke he calmed the storm and he challenged them about their faith there are times that the storm scares me. And I need to remember my Savior is in the midst of it. My Savior is in my boat. And He can calm the waters, not necessarily the circumstances, but He can calm how I react to it. So today's shot talk is maintaining or keeping the right tension on your blade. Not only your bandsaw blade, but also your personal tension. Thank you very much.